living by inspiration. That's the breath of life. Living attuned to the breath of life. It is one of the most defiant, contrarian things you can do. And yet it seems so attractive, so desirable, an inspired life. Doesn't it just pull magnetically? Who wouldn't want to live that? I have found that it requires a willingness to counter many normative things, norm, like many normalized tendencies, because so much of what is quote-unquote norm is actually anti-life, just like antibiotic. It's like right there glaring in our face, telling us this counters life, and we've just become normalized to it. Oh yeah, it makes sense that I would take this pill. It makes sense that I would distrust this plant. That's just a tiny example of how it has crept into the normative foundation of our consciousness, that we accept things that counter life. So when you are rooted, deeply rooted and anchored in life, then you will find yourself at odds, at oppositional odds with many social currents like a river current, that that's the momentum, that the dominant momentum is going in a direction that counters life. And if you are a being who is fixed in life, you're at odds. So that being the case, this is a time that has given life-oriented beings an incredible invitation to flex, to get strong and fit and muscular in our collaboration with life. And what that even means. And to even wake up to the attack on it. So, again, I won't lay a problem at your feet without also offering a potential solution for it. So here is a solution that was presented to me by the Breath of Life this morning, and I'd like to share it with you. It ended up being a practice in elaborate gratitude. My first unction was to create a guided meditation for it, because that is one of the normalized tendencies. All these meditations are guided, and there is an inference just within those two words that I personally no longer favor. Guided meditation infers that one needs a guide to do it. It infers that it could not be truly self-directed from the beginning. And that is my claim. I'm proof of it. I'm the fruit of self-directed, self-guided meditation from the beginning. I never had a guru. I didn't have a book or a video. It came from an unction on the inside. And that, I believe, is why my root of meditation is as strong as my vagus nerve. It is as real as my vagus nerve. That's pretty core. So for that reason, I'm not going to offer any more guided meditations. Because you don't need a guide in my belief. Instead, I'm going to offer a meditation description, okay? And in describing it, you will get from the description a framework that you could either mimic or revise or ignore, you know? 
Let's see how this works. So the way it started it was I had an incense stick in my hand. And that's a very common thing because I enjoy fragrance. So I was inspired. The breath of life sort of led me to a state of, I guess, playfulness, lightheartedness. And so in this real childlike way, I just started doing twirls in the air from the smoke of the incense. I'm just twirling in the air and even playfully drawing, just pleasing shapes. So almost like a choir conductor, you know, do, 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 do. And so he's got that stick in his hand. She has that stick in her hand. They have that stick in their hand. (laughs) And in the same way that they direct sound from the movement of their stick, I got into that same mind state. And it seemed and felt as if I was directing sound with the movement of my stick. And so then it became a thing of like, wow, well, if I could direct sound with this stick, what kind of sound do I want to make? The instinct that I had, it was of thanks. It was of gratitude. And that is how this practice came to be, this practice of elaborate gratitude. Because prior to lighting the incense, I was lighting the incense just out of normal routine, but also because I was about to mop. So all this was pre-mopping. So I knew that I was going to, you know, I basically just kind of had this utilitarian energy. I'm going to go mop. So that was what was about to take place. And then instead, here comes this playful movement of my stick, feeling like a conductor, feeling responsible for the kinds of sounds that I would make since I had entered into this state of of feeling as if the sound would be made. So then I want the sound to be beautiful. And I know that gratitude and thanks is always beautiful. There's no story. There's no need to fiddle with it. It will always perfectly be beautiful. So I trust the unchanging certainty of that. Okay. So then with the stick, I literally went over all the objects and spaces in my home with thanks. And I went corner to corner in each room. Salt lamp, computer, um, that special light that I don't use. <laughs> but anyway, we'll, oh, ring light, ring light, which maybe we'll use one day. Okay. Bed, painting, cat bed, mirror, tapestry, all these things. Okay. And then crock pot, blender, juicer. Produce, oh my goodness, pineapple, mango, avocado, lime, all these fruits and vegetables that have been supporting my physical strength, that have been supporting my cognition, my activity, that have been supporting my literal physical life, my immunity, coconut oil, olive oil, nuts, all these things that have been supporting my physicality. I just gave thanks with the movement of my stick. And I entered into it, and I literally felt, as I thanked these things, this bed that supports my rest, this banana that supports my potassium level, I literally felt connected to each of these things, understanding their contribution to my well-being. So that's just an example, a description of a meditative encounter that started in the most mundane way. A bucket and a mop, and then it turned into this gorgeous thing. I mean, I go into the kitchen and I'm like, ah, 
I shall bless my temple. I mean, you know, so again, yeah, it's elaborate. Why not? And if something will be elaborated, why not something that springs from gratitude and beauty rather than fear and death and destruction? This is not avoidance. This is conscious feeding and also conscious starving. So I'm very curious if anyone listening is inspired to try this practice of elaborate gratitude. What would it be like for you? What are the corners and spaces and objects that you would be giving up amplified thanks for, elaborate gratitude for? I really would love to hear and would also love for that kind of data to be there laying forth truth for other eyeballs to see so that there can be other kinds of information that are also taking up space in our reality, whether in a social media comment or in between the ears, right when you need to be reminded. I am elaborately grateful for you. Thank you for being on this journey with me.